Hi everyone and welcome to the series finale for the BIM for Civil Infrastructure Development webinar series where we are going to be looking at design visualization. I hope your Friday is going really good at the moment and trust me whatever you're going to see here today it's really really good right so let's have a look at what we're going to be covering today. Of course, I will be your host for today's uh, webinar, as well as the host for the entire series. I am Shoaib Yunus. I am the BIM Technical Specialist for Civil Infrastructure and Mining here at Baker Mains in South Africa. Uh, those are my credentials on the screen. What I do at Baker Mains, I am involved in numerous projects involving BIM for Civil Infrastructure, GRS, so Geographic Information Systems, Common Data Environments, or CDEs as they're known, Reality Capture, Scan to BIM, so laser scanning, drones, those type of things, as well as virtual reality and visualization. And of course, if you would like to reach out to me directly, my email address is shuaib at bakerbains.com. So just to give you a quick one slider as to what we do here at Baker Baines, of course, we are proud evangelists of technologies and in consulting space within the AEC and PDM industries, AEC being architecture, engineering and construction, PDM being product design and manufacturing. We partner with really cool brands uh, that help you to design and make a better world. Uh, one of them being Leica, which is on the scan to boom reality capture segment. We also partner with a lot of automation technologies. So IDES, which you have seen quite a bit throughout this webinar series, really, really powerful tool in Civil 3D. Uh, and of course, it's developed here in South Africa. So the functionality is also localized to our South African market, and it's also used throughout the world. ClearH 3D falls more or less on the scan to BIM or the refined scan to BIM workflow, where it is a point cloud geometry extraction technology that extracts geometry from a point cloud for you. So if you're one of those users that have to trace a point cloud manually, this software does about 70% of the work for you. I've tested it on our own office, uh, the office that I'm currently sitting in at the moment, and it saved me about 90% of modeling time because you can export to AutoCAD, you can export to Revit, which is more preferable, and so on. And it can also be applied in the structural space, so structural steel, as well as plants. So if you're scanning a plant, and you need to extract the pipes and stuff like that, ClearH 3D does that for you. A new addition or fairly new addition to our range is Cool Orange. They're on the uh, product design and manufacturing space or more on the data management side. Really cool integrations there, especially if you are in the plant space. We also offer a lot of uh, classroom and virtual training. You've probably seen that quite a bit on our social media handles. So classroom, of course, in person, virtual training online, and a really great tool that I'm very proud to be a part of is the CAD learning. So if you are one of those designers that have to learn on the go and uh, you need like 24 seven support, CAD learning is an online uh, platform that allows you to learn on the go. It has about, I think, 50 plus Autodesk classes on there. So for example, if you have to log in and you wanna learn civil 3D on the go, they are pre-recorded videos with exercise files that you could do and upskill at your own leisure. So very, very advantageous. And of course, you can test yourself. So if you feel you're pretty good at a certain software, you could do a quick skills test. And let's say you achieved 80%, it will create a custom playlist focusing only on that 20% that you got wrong. So really, really intelligent in the upskilling and development phase. So that's just us in a nutshell on a one slider. Of course, I will have more information about how you could get in contact with us at the end of the webinar. All right, so like I said, this is the webinar finale for this series. And of course, it was a six part webinar series. So if you are joining us for the first time, welcome. I will get to where you could find the previous parts shortly. But today we're going to be looking at design visualization, bringing in all of our detailed design that we have done throughout this six part webinar series. On the right hand side, you can see that those are the technologies that we have incorporated. Some of them you will be seeing today 
and the technologies in the red rectangle are the stars of the show, if I could say that, where infrared civil 3D and of course IDAS have been a critical component in achieving the design. All right, so you're going to see some other formats brought in today, and yeah, you're in for a real treat from a visual perspective. So in terms of all of our webinar series, uh, be it in civil infrastructure, architecture, structural engineering, plant, process, all of that, as well as our events, are uploaded to our Baker Veins YouTube channel. So if you find yourself in like a time constraint where you can't really attend a webinar at a given time, register anyway, because once it is uploaded to the Baker Veins YouTube channel, you will be sent a link and you can go watch it at your own time and at your own pace. I will also be posting the recording uh, on LinkedIn. So if you are on LinkedIn, strongly recommend that you follow me, you follow Baker Baines. And of course, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, turn on the notifications so that as soon it is, as it is uploaded, you will get an alert. So if you want to check out part one and part five, you want to have a quick recap, maybe after this, as to how we got here, all of that is on YouTube. Okay. So today's session, again, I'm going to go over this one more time as the industry perspective, what challenges are faced in civil infrastructure development, municipal engineering, what complexities are faced very quickly, and then we're going to jump into the fun part of the webinar, looking at importing objects, component mapping, adding more elements, as well as what visualization options are there. So this webinar is going to be showing you what outputs are available in the AEC collection, so Architecture, Engineering, Construction Collection. My previous webinar series, which was titled the Civil Collaboration Webinar Series, which is also on our Baker Means YouTube channel, shows you how to do a few of these things like from scratch. So if you're seeing things on here and it's a bit quick, also go and check out that webinar series. I have delved into it quite in detail, so I didn't want to repeat myself what well, because it's already there and yeah you will find yourself uh, you'll find yourself around in terms of what you want to achieve last but not least we will then have our closing we will look at the key takeaways very important how we can help you so stick around for that and of course if you have any questions during the webinar please shoot them away into the chat box or the question box i will get to them at the end and of course if you have any comments as to what you're seeing if you're enjoying it also jump that into the chat box you're more than welcome to okay so let's start off with the industry perspective what challenges are normally faced in the civil infrastructure industry as well as when you are creating a development now, the first one is design complexity. I mean, if you're looking at the image on the right hand side, our model today is actually way larger than that, by the way. You will see shortly. It can be quite messy. And uh, dealing with the visualization portion of it, I did pick up quite a few errors, which I have included in the webinar so that if you see things looking wrong in your model, you might have an idea as to how to fix it. So if you have a lot of civil infrastructure components in a tight area, it can be quite messy to uh, decipher. The second one is design coordination. So ensuring that all involved is on the same page. Again, if you are dealing in or like working in a consortium, which is mostly the case in these type of projects, you need to interface quite efficiently and coordinate with all of those that are involved. And if your processes are wrong, this becomes quite a challenge and it can be very costly, especially in the construction phase. Closely knitted to that is design collaboration. So sharing and incorporation of the latest data along the project life cycle. You don't want to be working off data that is obsolete or has been superseded by another revision. Definitely not. So you would also need to look at how you could bring the team on board to achieve a single source of truth. Technology forms a great part of this workflow because with the right tools, you're going to get the right results. So if you are using 2D tools to design something and you expect a 3D deliverable, that's not going to work. 
it's going to be very challenging, very manual, very cumbersome. And the correct technology is very, very imperative in this regard. Last but not least, it's design visualization. Now, dealing with a lot of consultants throughout Africa and abroad, I've seen that this has become quite a staple in complex projects where they would need the design to be translated into something that is visual 3D because not everyone that is funding the project has an engineering background or could you read a technical drawing. So they want to see something like on the right hand side on the screen where how the project is going to look at the end or what is the visualization goal or the deliverable. So these are very, very critical challenges. And throughout the series, we have solved all of them quite effectively. Today, you're going to see how we're going to look at design visualization. So now that we have a context as to what we're doing and the problems that we're solving, let's jump right into the design visualization finale. So I thought I'll include this. Uh, again, we normally have a lot of new people attending our webinars, which is fantastic. So a quick recap from part one to five so that you can get up to speed to what we are achieving today. So I created like a design brief being in the consulting industry, being an engineer. This is normally what we would get. And we were tasked to create a development in Belito in KZN, South Africa. And as a consultant or as a consortium that we were, we were tasked with all of these uh, deliverables on your screen. So we started with the site design and that was ticked off. That was part one. Part two looked at road design. So we had incorporated or designed the roads to create access inside of the uh, development as well as to it. Then we had to, of course, cater for the stormwater design where we did the piping for that. And then, of course, because we have houses in here, we needed to do sewer and water. So we created municipal services. We modeled that quite nicely with Civil 3D and IDA as being a really key component of that. And today we have reached the finish line where we're going to look at design visualization. All right, so that is the methodology, the sequence that we had applied through the series. And today we are at the finish line. So let's start off with importing civil design from civil 3D to InfraWorks. Now, this part, you're gonna see a lot of errors and I'm gonna talk you through it as to what could probably cause that. I was first a bit hesitant, but you know that I like showing when things also go wrong because it doesn't always go perfect. So let's have a look. So as you can see, Right, I use the data sources button to import all of the civil 3D metadata. You can see that if you wanted to, you simply go to that button there and you say import civil 3D drawing. That's it. There's a lot of different files that you can import that I've been highlighting on the screen. And you'll see that they come along the vector classification will be civil 3D DWG. So let's scroll to see what happened. So again, this is a platform that has been designed to a design level, right? Uh, some portions are higher, some are lower, depending on the stormwater that we wanted to. But as you can see, there's a lot of errors. Now the pipe networks also came through that red line that you're seeing, you can see those are the structures. We can change them, of course, but I left it as it is. And you can see that pipe should not be there. The surface does not look correct. And below ground, all of the pipe networks came through. Right, so you can see, for example, the stormwater was also there. The pipe for water and sewer are also lower down. Okay, so you might need to check your drawing as to if your elevations, your cover are too much or too little. And of course, there's areas in the surfaces like you shouldn't be having the targets coming down like that jagged portion there. So you can see all of the pipe networks have come in. The structures are there. So you can see that is a water structure. Just to show you that the data did come in, I could even select the pipe and it will give me all of that metadata associated to that pipe branch. So you can see branch one is there and it gives me the material and the metadata under advanced shows that it has come in from Civil 3D because it has an ID. All right, so all of the data comes in quite successfully, but it looks incorrect because the now, if you get the, this type of a scenario, first of all, you need to check your targeting of your road corridors, 
you need to check the, the targeting of your uh, platform itself, right? So you can see the road targeting there is absolutely incorrect, right? Because we don't want something like that. Uh, can you imagine for stormwater, it's going to be puddling into the, uh, the earth or the plots? Uh, the texture material is pretty good. As you can see, the more you zoom into it, the more apparent it becomes. So the detail in InfoWorx is absolutely amazing. Okay. So my tips for this will be check your roads if they are targeting or referencing the correct surface. Check your platform if they're referencing the natural ground level correctly. Check that your vertices are at the correct design level and so on. And as you can see, all of the metadata from Civil 3D has come through, meaning that I cannot move those objects on InfraWorks because they're linked to a design model. So that is very nice. Now you're probably thinking, what happens if I make a change in Civil 3D? As long as the file is in the same location that you had imported it in, all you gotta do is refresh the data source in, in InfraWorks and it will automatically update. Now, when you're first importing the file, depending on the size of your model, the number of objects and so on, it can take a few minutes to successfully import. However, uh, once you import it and you make changes to the imported file, it's quite quick in terms of refreshing. And of course, your computer spec does play a part here. Now, the computer I've used for this is entry level, meaning it is a 16 gig i7 computer. It doesn't have a crazy amount of RAM. Of course, I would recommend minimum 32 or 64 so that you don't get frustrated sometimes if things are loading quite long. But hardware component is also a key part. But hey, I've achieved this with an entry level computer. So I'm sure that if you have 16 gigs i7, you could also do the same. Right. So now another thing that you probably had noticed on the Aero model, if I could call it that, besides, of course, the pipe. Again, that surface is incorrect, meaning that the targeting is incorrect. Uh, the rim elevations of the structures are way above ground. We do not want that. It's also encroaching onto the, uh, the reserve in terms of it's exceeding the reserve, meaning it's going now into the plots where the houses are. That's the black line that you're seeing there. So that all needs to be fixed. So when you are designing, again, your critical civil uh, capabilities, your thinking and your methodologies to apply. Now, when it comes to the road, if you have this problem where it comes in as the wrong color, the easiest way was to map this in civil 3D directly, but I know a lot of users get confused with that, even though it is quite easy, they find it quite intimidating. So, I intentionally did not map my uh, materials or my textures. So as you can see in InfraWorks, it has a wide variety of different finishes that you can apply. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select asphalt as usual, and I've selected a single portion of that road. This is what we call manual override or manual component mapping. And you can see it has adjusted now, sometimes you might also find it updates something with the same shape code, like the sidewalks on either end should not be asphalt. Unless you're achieving that, then pretty good. In my case, no, I want paving. But as you can see, it only updated that portion of the road. Now, you can go and update each one manually, but it's quite uh, monotonous. There is another way that you can do it quite quick in terms of updating all of them to reference that same material. So what I will do is I'm gonna use something called uh, component mapping. You'll see it there, there it is. And if I click that, it will open up all of the corridor models uh, from my actual screen, okay? Meaning, whatever is present in my civil 3D model, it will be linked there under the shape code. So if it is matching a certain shape code, for example, PAVE 2 or PAVE 1, and if I wanted all of the materials to match that shape code, all I have to do is update it here. Now the advantage is it will update everything that is matching that shape code. 
It's also kind of a disadvantage if you are not familiar with Civil 3D because if you use the wrong shape codes uh, in your model, it will update those as well. So just be careful, right? But of course, it is quite easy to fix. You could manually override it if needed, like I showed you. So I'm going to go select the material. Uh, I can select whatever I want. You can see if you resize the tiles, it looks much more better. If I hit OK, you'll see now all of Pave 2 is going to be updated to that uh, finish. And I can also classify it in terms of what I want. I can do multiple components. So for example, if I wanted to change the curving to white, uh, not that ideal, but I have seen it uh, in a few designs, depending on what your output would be, I could go and do that. So instead of doing one by one, you could component map multiple components in this menu. And yeah, it will update all of them one shot. So again, this might take a few minutes, depending on the extent or the comprehensive nature of your model. And once I'm happy with updating it, I can hit run rules. Again, it will take a few secs and you'll see it'll start doing something like this in your model where it would regenerate, okay? So it will start regenerating and here we are. You can see now my sidewalk is the material that I want. My curving is also a standard stock curve. By the way, that's a South African figure curve, right? That was brought in from IDAS. So our South African standards are there and you can see everything has updated. Like I said, if your targeting is not right, you're gonna find pieces missing in the road, elevation differences and so on. Go and fix that, check your targeting and you'll see in the visualization model, it will look great. Okay, so now you have an idea how to fix some errors. Now let's go on more on the creative part of things. So I'm gonna bring in a tool that is predominantly used by architects, but it can be used by engineers as well, or practically anyone. Incorporating objects used in format. Now, again, I have shown this in the Civil Collaboration Webinar Series, where I've done a model from zero, but if you can use AutoCAD, honestly, you can use this. So let's have a look. Now, my key tips for this, Again, it is part of the AC collection. Go and check your units because sometimes it might be set to imperial, it might be set to metric, it might be set to millimeters. You might want to use meters, you know, and you can see all of your basic draw commands are here. So it's very visual. You can do a lot of other things as you can see energy analysis and so on. You can toggle on certain ribbons or toolbars to help you design much more quicker. Uh, we'll get to some of these later on, maybe the materials, the visual styles. To be quite honest, the one I would recommend is keeping the materials layer on or the library. You can see it has a lot of built-in objects. And of course, you can add objects from your own content library. So if you have 3D models that you have got from someone or you've downloaded online, you can add them or incorporate them into your designs by simply importing them in. It just gives you a few samples. Uh, when it comes to the materials, uh, that's where you can go and assign different renders, uh, different visual styles and so on. Uh, visual style is more like wireframe, uh, conceptual, same like you would normally get in default CAD applications, okay? So this you don't really have to touch, to be quite honest. Uh, you've got your normal 3D uh, tools there for like sweeping, lofting and so on. Right, you can add in text, 3D text. Uh, you can incorporate Dynamo if you are very uh, versatile for automation. And this is how the materials look. So you have a materials library, again, that's built in with a variety of textures. You can see this for roofing, stones, textiles, tile, wall textures, water, wood. And you can go and add more folders to this if you like. So if you go and download textures or if you have some available, you can go and Put that now what i've done is i've just clicked on a cube just to show you how easy it is and if you hit the tab key you can then go and add your exact dimension so let's say maybe this was a column i can go and give it whatever uh, measurements or dimensions i would like and you can simply go and drag and drop where you want it to be so 
where the green, red, and purple or blue lines intersect, that is your origin point, of course. And you can go and design relative to that. And you can see the grips help you to make things thicker, larger, shorter, uh, more slender, and so on. So it's very self-explanatory, this software. And I really enjoyed using it. You'll see that I'm going to use it now to create a guard house that we're going to import to our model. So play around with it, see what you can do, uh, see what you want to do. And because it's so intuitive, it's very easy to pick up. Right, so if you, like I said, if you can use AutoCAD, by all means, go have some fun with Format. It's a really, really fun tool. Okay, so instead of you watching me zoom in and zoom out and pan and whatever, I have already modeled it using the basic tools in Format. This is all done in Format. This is going to be my guard house at the entrance of our estate or our development. And what I'm going to do is I've left the materials so that I can show you how to assign them. So I tick on that. And all I've got to do now is go and tick on or click on the relevant folder. Right, so let's say I want to do the roof. I can go in there and I can go and have a look at what default samples are available. You can see pretty much all of the popular ones are there. All right, so example, Spanish tile is there, but I wanted to, I like red, so I thought I'll put in a red tile. And all you've got to do is select the material and click on where you would like to assign it. So I clicked on the roof, and that is it. And you can see it is assigned, and it looks very visual, very nice. Okay, so that's what you would need to do. Um, it will add it to your sketch. You can then go and see what other materials you would like to uh, add onto your model. Uh, maybe let's go to brick and block. Again, I'm not an architect, so I'm going to put my creative knowledge here to a little bit use. Let's see if this will look fine. Uh, you can see I've used that type of a brickwork, and I simply clicked on where I needed it to be. So you can see you can just pan, model, zoom, uh, whatever, orbit, and you click on the areas that you want, and the materials have been assigned. So again, very easy. This is a very easy software to use, and it can be quite a game changer when it comes to visualization basics. So I continued on this quest and I assigned the rest of the materials, and this was the result. So you can see I've added a gate to, in, to leave. I've added boom gates as well. Um, I've added material texture for the window. You can actually see the glare on it, which is fantastic. And yeah, this is our result. Now, what we're going to do is, we are going to export this to a very common file format called FBX. It is widely used around. If you want to generate back faces, you can. I honestly didn't need to tick that. But what you would do is, if you're working with a lot of meshes, uh, you would need to tick that on so that the triangulation of the meshes comes in. Uh, maybe for 3ds Max, if you have a complex object, you can. Uh, if not, you can leave that unticked. It comes in pretty, pretty nice. Okay, so that is format uh, very quickly. Now, what about out of the box elements in InfraWorks? Now, you've seen me previously add trees, add cars, and so on. I didn't want to um, repeat those things. And I, honestly, I did not get to add in most of them. Like, if I had a bit of time, uh, just to give you some insight, I had about five days to work on this model. So I just got it to a decent space, I would say. There's more, much, much more that you could have added. But the question that I normally get from the users, especially on LinkedIn, how do you insert linear objects or like fences and stuff? Now, I didn't get to insert the white picket fence uh, yet, but I'm going to show you, if you do have objects, how you can. So in Info, InfoWorks, on the create tab, of course, you've got transportation that you could use. You've got structures for bridges, tunnels, and buildings. You've got drainage elements. I don't need that because I've brought it in from IDAS. But on the environment tab, you have a ton of options. These are very comprehensive. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to linear decorations. Now, these are normally used for crash barriers. They're used for fences. They're used for walls and so on. So if you have a parametric object, you can go and select it. 
Now, the fin selection in InfraWorx is not that great. I think it's more catered towards construction. So I would say maybe get a 3D model and use that. You can see you can filter between parametric and 3D. Parametric will be the gold standard because you can then update these elements. Um, if you want, you can even model them in Inventor if you'd like and then import them in. It's totally up to you, whichever method you use. So let's say I'm going to insert this fence here. It's solid. It's not perfect. You can see I'm doing it on the plot. The black lines on the green grass actually represent each person's yard. Now, this is the problem I, or the question I normally get from the users. There's gaps in the fences. What is going on? Do not panic. You actually did it correctly. We just need to adjust certain elements. So when you select the object, the asset card comes there. And look at that, there's a spacing set. So you need to adjust the spacing to what you like. If you have it to one meter, there's a slight overlap and if that looks okay, I would say, so play around with the spacing and it will close those gaps for you automatically. So do not panic, select the object, go and check the asset card. If it looks too small, you can also enhance the scale uniformly. You can see it's got much more taller, but now I might need to adjust, for example, the spacing. And you can see that is the result. So the asset card here is your best friend, just like Civil 3D, the command line, or any CAD application. You can see the pipes and stuff are still there. And yeah, that's how you would in insert it. I mean, the rest of them are pretty easy. I mean, if you want to put in a tree, go select a tree and drop it in wherever you'd like, the tree will be there. If you want to insert a car, you can. If you want to insert people, you can. I mean, there's so many objects. I mean, there's even default houses there. I was very tempted to use those, but I said, no, nope. I will use sources from Revit, from Format, and so on. And you can see, there is a lot of default stuff that's built into InfraWorks that you don't have to go and search online for. All right, so have a look at the library. It's pretty comprehensive in my opinion. If you're looking for something much more detailed or stuff like that, by all means go and download what you would like. You can see certain things are not there like walls and stuff. I mean, that you would do in Revit. Uh, cars are there, vehicles are there, trucks are there, buses are there. You've got a whole range of things to insert. Okay, so please go and do that. And uh, yeah, I'll just insert this car very quickly. I just double click where I wanted it to be. And this is the result, okay? So pretty self-explanatory on that result, but the linear one normally comes up quite a lot. So I thought, hey, I'll show you how to fix that in this webinar. Again, you can go and rotate objects, make them bigger, make them smaller, bring them up, bring them down. Basic civil commands or basic CAD commands if you want to make this a massive car, I mean, you can go and rescale it accordingly. Okay, so that's a little bit about the library. I hope this helps you, uh, all those that have asked me for those linear queries. And yeah, you shouldn't have a problem after that. All right, so go ahead and have a look at what's available and play around. Now, my visualization model incorporates all of these elements. So I brought in that Revit model. I made it like a very, very fancy clubhouse. Might be a bit of an overkill, but hey, I mean, it could have a gym and it could have a restaurant, it could have a spa. I mean, uh, that's, most, that's the way that most of the developments are going, right? So I brought in a really big or decent Revit model. I brought in a model from SketchUp, which is a simple stop sign. I didn't have uh, enough time to go and find like freely available models, I said. Ah, since it's more civil works, I bring in a stop sign. A really cool thing that I've incorporated in my previous webinar as well was a recap photo model. So that was, I think, taken, I'm not sure, by a phone or what camera, and it was stitched together. And I exported that and I adjusted the textures to what I wanted. You will see it in a bit. I think um, I didn't get the color as I would want, but it's quite easy to edit but anyway you will see it soon and of course i brought in an advanced steel model i use this like as a car wash type of a scenario where the cars will park at the bottom so uh let me move my mouse there so maybe somewhere there the cars will come in 
and on the top you could go up chill have a coffee or whatever you want and come back down so i thought i'll bring in some different models to show you that this is quite achievable okay now this is where i think everyone is waiting for to be in the webinar your visualization options available in the ac collection all right so i have tabulated it all columnated it into four options so if you are using infoworks you don't need anything else you'll see the quality that comes out so if you are using infoworks by all means uh, in my opinion it is the easiest option the visuals are pretty decent they're pretty good they're pretty dynamic model snapshots are quite easy to do fly throughs are quite easy and if you wanted to animate things like I've done in the civil collaboration webinar series, you can do it in InfoWorks, I mean in 3ds Max and bring it into InfoWorks. So it can serve as your base point for your visualization model. So I'm a big fan of InfoWorks. I think everyone who's following me knows that I really enjoy that software. Format Pro. So if you want to create some visuals, you can, I think, do some uh, animations i haven't done any yet on there but if you're looking for like a very artsy uh, sketchy type of a look uh, format pro gives you a pretty decent uh, render so you can snapshots create snapshots from there the visuals are pretty good uh, great for ideas and concepts so normally when you see architects like give you a concept it has those like black lines that are encompassing the objects and looks pretty cool uh, so you can actually do that with format and the great thing is your sketches can be incorporated into Revit which is fantastic all right so if you want to explore something new format pro if you're more on the artsy vibe or want to look a bit cool format pro is the way to go now when it comes to default applications so for example AutoCAD has this Navisworks has this 3ds Max has this advanced steel has this I think a lot of the CAD native objects or software have this where you could use Autodesk rendering. So if you are clueless with rendering, you're a novice, uh, you don't know what to do, uh, maybe you haven't even delved into Infrox or Format and you have your model in CAD, my first advice was will be to get out of CAD and uh, or link your CAD to Infrox or Format or something like that, or even 3ds Max. But if you are stuck and you have all of your renders or your materials assigned in AutoCAD or Advanced Steel or whatever it may be, Autodesk rendering is your best bet. Now I use it in conjunction with Navisworks. You can, you're gonna see why very, very shortly, why I use it. And the reason why I recommend that you use Autodesk rendering because the cloud does everything for you. So as long as you set your position, for example, uh, your perspective as to which portion of the model you would like to render so you get a nice uh, cinematography type of angle get your photography skills into play set that up and then as long as your materials and those type of things are assigned to your CAD elements you can simply go to the render option on your tab and use Autodesk rendering depending on the quality that you want it does work with cloud credits but you can do like a test that is not full quality, but it will give you an idea. Now, I strongly recommend if you are doing this, do a draft first, because you might pick up, I've done this, uh, this was last year sometime, where I did a draft render and I realized that I forgot to assign a certain material. So the color was wrong on one of the columns. Now, if you did a final render, I mean, it's gonna take your cloud credits and you don't want to, reach that problem and say ah oh, man i should have actually checked my work so do a draft if it looks good go to a final production render and you are good to go now the great thing with uh, navisworks as well is the panoramic vr uh, you can also get this on the autodesk online cloud rendering service but i like to do it in navisworks because i can also do a walkthrough from a third person perspective and of course, you can integrate that with 3ds Max. So you can see all of these solutions are quite integratable with each other. And last but not least, if you're going for the gold standard, 3ds Max, it's a no-brainer. 
you will get stunning visuals and animations. You can do a lot of really cool stuff. I mean, it's used in Hollywood to do uh, their scenes. I think they used it on uh, Game of Thrones for the dragon. They used it on Thor. They used it on the Lego movie. I mean, 3ds Max is used in Hollywood, so you can imagine the quality that you would get. Again, your render quality will also depend on your graphics card as well as the amount of RAM that you have. Uh, so hardware does play a role. The specs are readily available online. So if you had to go and Google 3ds Max render specs for certain types of outputs, if you want something really on the extreme high end, you might need a better computer and so on. And of course, you can do AR and VR in uh, 3ds Max. You can do stereo panoramic VR in uh, Navisworks. You can do uh, InfraWorks fly through. So animation is also built into a lot of these applications. Okay, so now that you know your options, let me give you a taste of how they would look. Now, I just want you to take this in. This is where we started. This is in InfraWorks. It is blank. I put in the Google image on the right hand side. First of all, most consultants can't even get here, which is quite a problem. And hopefully, these webinars are changing their perspectives to see the value. Okay. This is where we had started. Now let's look at our final visualization models. This is what we got in InfraWorks. Like I said, I didn't have, I only had about five days to do this, so I didn't get in some things that I wanted to really get in, like the picket fence and stuff like that. But I think this conveys the message pretty well. You can see the entire estate on the left. You can see the houses. I mean, look at the quality of it. You can even see the rock facade on there. It looks absolutely amazing. The shadow effects are on there. The stop sign is in there. The lighting for the road that I've put in. Um, the Revit model, as you can see in the bottom right, left corner, um, as well as the pipe networks at the bottom. Right, so the bottom right corner is showing you the pipe networks that is linked in this case to the road. So that should be the stormwater with the other services like water and sewer just on uh, the other frames and so on. So these are the still images that I captured from InfraWorks. But I'm not going to leave you like that. I'm going to give you a quick fly through through my model for InfraWorks. Um, I do not use the storyboard for this, so I just hand through my model in the interface and I recorded it, so apologies for that. Again, time pressure was a bit hectic on my end for this one as to what I wanted to achieve, but let's have a look. So this is my uh, InfraWorks model. I'm gonna play it in a bit. You can see, uh, you can even put in signboards. I created that signboard this morning, believe it or not, and I've imported that in, so it's our, Film for Silver Infrastructure Development Webinar Series, the finale. And you can see even my lion is there. I didn't get it the right shade of gold. I think I might have to change the uh, gloss texture and so on, but that can be fixed quite easily. But let's have a look. All right, so you can see this is not a small model by any means at all. Right, so here we are, you can see it's a proper signboard. That's why I thought I'll, I'll toggle it around so you can see. This is our estates. These are the houses. I mean, look at that. It looks absolutely great. And um, of course, in Revit, if you've done it, you can even add the inside textures. You can see the couch there. That's our road widening that we brought in from Civil 3D that's going to be coming into where the guardhouse is by the entrance to the boom gates. Let's take a pan around and have a look. You can see the plots look amazing. The lighting is also in for each road. The stop signs are put hopefully everywhere. Uh, I had to scramble for that one quite a bit. I mean, I'm sure if you use Dynamo, there's a way to automate that quite easily, but I just did everything a tad bit old school. But look at that, right? So this is in InfraWorks. If you're happy with this visuals, I am definitely. I mean, look at the, the rock finish on there. This is pretty, for me, this is pretty good. Uh, like if someone submitted this to me as a, a development plan or final render, I would accept it because the quality, the finishes are on there. So if you 
aggregate your model pretty well. You use the steps that I've showed you in this webinar series. You pay a lot of attention to civil 3D and IDAS because that's the foundation of your design because you're not going to be doing the house models and stuff. I had to do everything, everything that you're seeing on the screen I did. So you would normally receive that from the architect. But yeah, you can see even I brought in the parking stripes with the disabled uh, parking bays. I think I made that text a bit too thick um, and it's supposed to curve it at this end. So you can see I was really under the time pressure, but for five days, I think this is pretty good. I put in a coffee stand, I put in a few cars, I was going to put people, but I was like, nah, it's, it's okay for this one. Um, and that's our big Revit model that we brought in, our fancy clubhouse. Right, so let's toggle, or let's go in this way, get a better angle. Our stop sign is right there, lighting pretty good for there. Um, let's zoom into the car a bit. And you can see the paving for the sidewalk. Our South African figure curve is also brought in pretty nicely. And uh, yeah, this is what I was, uh, this was the result of following the steps. Last but not least, definitely our advanced steel model. So this is our car wash and chill spot that is below ground, all the pipe networks. You see, I didn't adjust some of them, they're floating around there. So make sure that your civil 3D model is up to scratch, especially for that. And uh, yeah, this is what we ended up with. So steel members can come in pretty easily. This was brought in directly from advanced steel. You can see I even kept in the CAD render so that you know it came in directly from advanced steel. And look how beautiful and amazing that looks. Okay, so an entire development was done using these tools. Uh, let's toggle it a little bit like how these uh, developments would normally advertise on a billboard or something like that. And this is what we have in Infrolux. Okay, so that is our first visualization option. So you can always hit me up in the chat to, to say what you think. If you have questions, of course, fire them away. I will get to them at the end. So this was just some still images that I've created in format or uh, derived from format. Now you can get an idea as to what I say. It's like artsy, cartoonish, uh, that type of vibe. And I also really like this. This looks also quite stunning. Uh, especially with the whole effects and stuff like that. So format, if you are going for this type of a finish, it is your best buddy. Uh, and like I said, it looks pretty cool, pretty, pretty cool. All right, so same model, just different output. Now the third option is Navisworks. Now here what I've done is the image on the left, top left, look how amazing this looks. This was actually done in the cloud with no um, interference from my end. I just said render to cloud and it did the trick for me. So again, the key to this is make sure that you use the correct materials in your CAD models. And that looks absolutely amazing. Not only that, all of these visuals are from Navisworks as well as the Autodesk rendering. On the bottom left, you'll see a panoramic VR. So if I put this into a headset, and I turn left, I turn right, I will be able to see it, I will be able to zoom in. That also looks quite crisp and neat. And on the top right, you will see I am doing a look around with a third person avatar. Okay, so if you wanted to look around in your model, you could simply put in a third person avatar or you could skip the avatar if you would like. Um, I just kept it in because it was a nice touch, something different to the panoramic VR at the bottom left. And uh, yeah. You can see this also gives you a really cool option for presenting, visualization, and so on. All right, so this is how the model looked in Navisworks. Again, we are not dealing with a small model. This is quite a large model with a lot of elements. All right, last but not least, I did not get a chance to do animation in 3ds Max, but look at the render quality. Bear in mind, this was done with a 16 gig computer, a 16 gig RAM computer, i7. Um, I mean, if I had probably a better graphics card or I'm not IT, so I'm sure they would probably advise like on better quality or better render farming or so on like that. But look at how real this looks. 
just look at these images. I mean, the sky looks amazing. The, the rendered textures for the Revit model for the houses, for the guard house. Uh, now you can see why I say that the lion, I didn't get it to the color uh, I wanted. I was a bit OCD on that, so, but I just left it because of time uh, pressure. But you can see uh, the quality is absolutely amazing in 3ds Max. So you can choose what you want or what you can start off with. You don't have to get to 3ds Max straight off the bat, even though you actually can. But it all comes down to the basics, using the right technology, the right tools, the right processes. And you can get to these render qualities that you're seeing here. Right. So yeah, that is our outputs for this webinar. So in closing, let's look at today's key takeaways. Again, that snapshot is just from InfraWorks. I cropped it, so it might look a bit longish, but anyway. We looked at importing civil design from civil 3D to InfraWorks. So once you import that using the data sources button in InfraWorks, check your design. Also took you through the areas where the targeting was incorrect. The pipes were everywhere. Uh, the road textures were incomplete. I mean, all of that was shown. So if your model, your base model, your CAD model, your detailed design or engineering model is incorrect, your visualization is also going to be incorrect, which is a great advantage because we normally pick up things in the visual phase, meaning if you see it in 3D and it looks wrong, that means it is 100% wrong. Whereas in 2D or in CAD, it's very difficult to visualize. So you can see the key components, the integration between CAD and 3D visualization. We also looked at bringing in uh, fancy objects or 3D models created in format into your InfraWorks model, how easy it is. And I really enjoyed this tool, uh, especially for the, this segment of the webinar series. It was quite fun. Also, when it comes to the road components or your road corridors from Civil 3D, if you are not familiar as to how you could component map them before you bring them into InfraWorks, I showed you how you can correct them in InfraWorks. So you could do them manually by selecting one by one, or you could use the component mapping menu where you could update multiple components in a few clicks. So whichever one suits your fancy, go for it. We also looked at adding additional visual model elements in InfraWix. So I inserted a car, I showed you how you could actually uh, sort out the fencing of the linear objects, right? I've got, like I said, a lot of queries on that. So hopefully it will be fixed. And of course we can incorporate a variety of different file formats. We brought in advanced steel models. We brought in format models. We brought in a SketchUp model. We brought in Revit model. Uh, I created a custom signboard uh, that you can even use AutoCAD to be quite honest. And I mean, the sky's the limit uh, for this type of integration and file formatting. And that's what makes InfraWorks like, I think my favorite visualization tool. And if I want to take it up a notch, I would go to 3ds Max. So we have covered quite a bit and congratulations. Well done. Uh, there's a lot of you that have followed me from, if I call it episode one of this uh, webinar series. Thank you very much for tagging along from the start. And we've completed another amazing series. Everything was done by myself here. Everything was created from zero. And you saw how it progressed to what we had seen today. So congratulations, hashtag another one, right? So again, if you have, if this was your first one, if you attended right at the end, go and check out our YouTube channel. It is all there. So how can we help you? Very quickly, and then we can get to the Q&A. So here at Baker Bains, this is our motto. And I think by seeing what we've done in this webinar series, you can attest to it, that we solve our customers' problems through digital transformation, helping them to design and make a better world. By making a better world, designing a menu and making a better world, you need the correct technologies, processes, and yeah, you need those in order to get there. So there's three ways that I could uh, propose that how we could help you. 
The first one is, of course, self-help, meaning do it yourself. Learn at your own pace in your own time. And I spoke about CAD learning. CAD learning is your tool to do this, where you could simply log in on Google or whichever browser you want, and all of the content is there for you to learn and upskill as to go. So if you might have a steel project that came along, you've got maybe advanced steel in your Autodesk uh, architecture, engineering, and construction collection, but you've never used it, now's your chance. You can go and open it up on one screen, work on the other screen in your model. It also has a help feature that fits directly into your CAD application. So if you're searching, a, for example, how to insert a connection, it will show you how to do it. So very, very powerful. CAD learning, if you want more info, I'll have my details at the end. You can always reach out to me. The next option is, of course, let us show you. This is what the webinar is about. Uh, we show you what's achievable. It might not go into the fine detail, but that's where training comes in. So we can offer you a lot of training on a variety of different software uh, solutions. These can be stock standard classroom training, fundamentals, or they could be advanced where you might be an, a veteran user, but you're struggling with a few uh, aspects in certain software. You could always pop me an email, give me the things that you are struggling with. We can have a chat. I will have a look at where it can be achieved. And if it can, we can create a custom course for you, particularly to your needs. And we can teach you how to do that. So hence, teaching you to fish for yourself. We also have Kickstarter courses. So if you're on a director level, just want to see what's happening with the software, what it can do, those are like very condensed, I think like one day or two day, one and a half day courses that you can get a big idea as to what you can achieve. Last but not least is definitely one that I prefer. Let's do it together, where we would sit down with your teams, your processes, your technologies, we'll have a chat with your departments and we will fine tune your internal processes. Not only that, we will identify a project. I've done this uh, quite a bit throughout the year where Consultants would approach us to say, listen, we've got this project here. We would like to implement, for example, BIM and intelligent technologies. Uh, can you assist us on that? And we would be your technology partner in implementing and training you on the model. So you're learning on the go. You're getting your work done as well. And it's a win-win. So if you find yourself in a very overwhelming or above your depth type of scenario, reach out to us. Let's have a chat, grab a coffee or something like that and we can discuss it and see how we can help you. We base all of this on our IADOC methodology, so we assess your current situation, we educate you to fish to your, for yourself, and we consult on you when it's above your depth, and this is all centered around your purpose as an organization. Each organization will have a different purpose, and of course, interlinked to that is your people, your processes, and your technology. So if you want to get in contact with us, those are all of our uh, online handles. So LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. This webinar will be uploaded to YouTube hopefully sometime early next week. So you can always go have a revisit. I will post it on LinkedIn as well. And you can tag your buddies, you can reshade, you can do whatever you'd like to get the awareness out there that we can do really cool things now with technology. Of course, if you want to reach out to me directly, that is my email address, shuaib at bakerbains.com. Anything civil infrastructure design and scan to BIM, I'm your guy. Uh, those are the technologies I thought I'll put the logos on. A lot of uh, the users appreciated this, <laughs> so thank you. Uh, so when they saw the logo, they could actually relate to what software they use. So yeah, if you see yourself on here, you can always hit me up. We can have a chat, we can grab a coffee, whatever it is. And uh, yeah, how I can help you, consulting, software training, scan to boom, process analysis, demonstrations, presenting at events or to your companies, webinars, and of course, having a chat. So that's my email address. By all means, feel free to reach out to me. So we are at the end segment, the Q&A. Let's have a look. I'm gonna quick have, have a quick scroll as to what questions we have, what's come through the comments. Uh, if anything has popped up in your mind, and I'm going to give it a few minutes, please fire away in, in, the, in the chat box. And yeah, we will get through it. Wow, OK, I'm already seeing really amazing comments. Thank you very much, uh, everyone. Uh, 
they think the model is absolutely fantastic. Um, someone saying, wish you could get through the entire uh, modeling phase. Yeah, that would be great. However, it will take us, uh, we have to do quite a lot of webinars. I mean, you could see the amount of infrastructure that I had put in there. But if you look at parts, I think two to five, that actually shows you how to model the civil infrastructure components. Uh, the visualization, you'll have to play around with it to get the renders correct. Um, yeah, a lot of people saying that InfoWix is enough. <laughs> I agree, uh, but like I said, when you get to a, a point where you wanna get better and level up, you're gonna end up at 3ds Max, trust me. I did say that, I, I really like InfoWix a lot. But if I do want to step it up a notch, 3ds Max is my next door to knock on. So, yeah, I thought the outputs looks like the idea I had for the outputs actually worked. So you guys can actually see the differences in what you can derive using different software. So thank you very much. Um, there's a question here. Uh, is the image used from geolocation correct? 100% Andrea. That is a geolocated model. So when we started off this uh, webinar series, we used the correct South African coordinate system. We configured that in Civil 3D. And if your coordinate system, your configuration, your geolocation is correct, it will bring in the correct base map or geolocation or aerial imagery. And that is what we used. So good question there. You can update that image. Sometimes the image might not be up to date. I'm sure you probably experienced that where it's an older image, maybe in 2020 or something like that. If you have a TIFF or ECW file or something like that, you can drape it onto your model in InfraWorks. You can translate it probably into Civil 3D as well as a TIFF. So there's a lot of options when it comes to geolocation. So thanks for bringing that one up. I appreciate it. Okay, let's see what else is here. Some of the questions are quite long, I don't mind. So if you see me silent for a few seconds, it's probably I'm, I'm reading it and trying to sum it up. Um, okay. All right, so there's one here, uh, the road mark, I think you probably meant the parking lot that I did there. Uh, the line work came in quite amazing. Um, how did you do that? So uh, this question keeps coming up in all of my webinars where I do this, but you simply draw the CAD. Uh, we use vehicle tracking for this in Civil 3D to do the line work. We then exported it to a shapefile, or you can even use an STF if you'd like. And we imported that into InfoWorks, assigned a color, we assigned a thickness, and it came in quite flush. Now, another thing that probably that I should say is in this webinar, my plan was to do the road marking in 3ds Max. Now you can do it the same method that I did the line work for the clubhouse area and so on. But um, I thought I will show you something different. Unfortunately, I did not get the time. It has been quite a chock block. Um, but 3ds Max has an amazing road marking tool that's built into it. So you export your civil 3D model to a VSP. It's, it's that type of format, but it's under output tab 3DS Max model. You select what you want and it recognizes the roads as intelligent objects. And you can then go and select the center lines and you can start creating your different line work from there. It's a really, really cool, right? Um, if you're not uh, familiar with 3DS Max, then do it the same way that I did with the parking layout stripes. So, so yeah, thanks for that question. Okay, are you an expert in format? No, <laughs> definitely not. Uh, I played around with it, to be quite honest. Um, so we, the modeling, like I said, if you got your CAD down, if you can model something in AutoCAD, you've got a good 3D mind, it's quite easy. It's like using paint. Uh, 